Hello and welcome to a new part of this series. Today we're going to be making a health bar. So now if I hit an asteroid right here, the health goes down over time. And again and again and again, the last time I get hit, I die. I can restart the level after that if I want to try it out again. And I can also pause the game if I need to. Let's get into this tutorial. And as always, you can get this scene and the end scene from the links down below. So let's start this tutorial by making a health bar. So go to the canvas right here and the scene view. Go to 2D and right click on the scene uh, on the canvas and create an empty game object. Rename it to the health bar. Right click on the health bar again and go to the UI and make an image. Let's uh, pick a different image for this. Let's make the background right here, this background bar. And let's resize that to something like, let's say 300 by something like 50 looks good and now let's call this the background and then just duplicate the background and for the image we have to go to the ui and the health bar right here and then set this to uh, to the sprite and ui and hit apply now go to the background the copied one and rename this to the health bar fill for the image choose the one that we just made so probably easier to just drag and drop the health bar right right here in there and now Zoom in a little bit, select the rect tool and make it fit nicely. Once you're happy with the fit, just drag it up a little bit, the whole game object. Go to the health bar fill again and for the image type select filled. For the fill method select horizontal and from origin from the left. So now if I get this slider down, it's gonna fill and unfill itself automatically. If I go to the game view, I do not like it like this rich. So just select these two elements and go to the color and let's make the alpha something like 170. And yeah, that looks more like spacey. Let's make it work in the scripts. Go to your scripts folder, open the player controller. First off, we need two variables. Let's make a public int. Let's call this the max health and set that equal to, let's say, four at the start. So this means that we can hit four asteroids before we die. Then a private int and let's call this the current health. Now in the start function, set the current health to the max health at the start right here. And now scroll down and let's create a new function. Let's make a new public void and call this the on asteroid impact. And in here, we're just going to subtract, subtract the current health. So current health minus minus, just going to subtract one from it. And then we want to change the health bar. And then we want to check if the current health is equal to zero. So not less or equal to zero because we just want it to be called once. And then what we want to do, then we want to make a function. Let's make a private void for that and on player death. And in here, we are just going to play an animation and do some something else later on. And then for now, just make a debug.log and call make something like the player died. And then call the on player death function right here. So for changing the health bar, we want to go to our in-game manager script right here. And to be able to change it, we need a public reference to our image. So we need to be using unity engine.ui. And let's make a public function. For, uh, for, let's make a void and change health bar. And what it's going to take in is a int max health and then a and the current health. Now, if the current health is less than zero, which means negative one and so on, and then we just want to return and not do anything in this function. And now let's make a float health percent and let's calculate the percentage the percentage go is going to be equal to the current health divided by the max health but we need to cast this to a float in order to get a float and not just a one or a zero and we also need to make a coroutine because if we go back to unity and here on the health bar fill if i now go to like 0 0.7 right right away it's not going to look pretty so if i change let's say this to like 0 0.5 and it's just gonna jump and not look very nice which we kind of want it to look so let's make a coroutine let's make it a private enumerator and call this smooth health bar change and we are going to pass in a float and let's call this a new fill amount and as always we want a float elapsed and let's set it equal to zero then we want a float the old fill amount and this is going to just be the what did we, what did we call this the okay now we have not made a reference yet so let's make a reference so let's make a public image and call this the health bar fill and then the old fill amount is going to be equal to the health bar fill dot fill amount right there 
we also need a time so let's make a public float the let's call this the health bar change time and set that equal to like 0.5 and now while the elapsed is less or equal to the health bar change time then we want to add to the elapsed to elapsed plus equals time dot delta time and and then we also want to calculate a float let's call this the current fill percent and set that equal to the math f dot lerp and we want to lerp in between the new fill amount the old fill amount and then a fraction and this is going to be the elapsed divided by the health change time this is quite simple just the health bar, uh, health bar fill dot fill amount is going to be equal to the current fill percent right there okay we can probably name this to the current fill amount so it's quite clear and now just the yield return null. This is our enumerator, which will slowly change the health bar value over time. So now we actually need to call it somewhere. And let's just start a coroutine, start coroutine, and make the call this function and pass in the health percent. Awesome, but now we still need to call this function right here on asteroid impact summer. So go to Unity and open up the asteroid controller script. And in here we want to make a on trigger enter again, a private void on trigger enter, trigger enter, and you should have a collider other in there if you autofill it. And now just check if the other dot compare tag, and if we if the asteroid hits the player, now we just want to access the player controller script. So we have we can go other dot game object dot get component, and then we want to get the component the player controller. And in the player controller, we want to call the on asteroid impact function right there. And then we also want to destroy the asteroid after we hit something. So the call the destroy asteroid function that we already have set up here. For now, it just destroys the game object. But like I said in the last tutorial, we are going to work on that. Now we still need to go to our player controller. And here where we change the health bar, now we have made a function. So let's make a reference. So we'll just make a, let's call this the public in game manager and we are going to set it up but let's call this the in-game manager and the in-game manager is going to be called right here where we change the health bar so in-game manager the change health bar and what do we want to pass in the max health and then the current health right here awesome now if we set up all the references we should be good to go in the in-game manager the health bar fill is just going to be equal to the health bar fill the star sparrow right here, the, the, the player controller, the in-game manager, just so I can drop the in-game manager in here. And also in the star sparrow one script, the tag has to be the player tag so that the asteroid knows when it hits something. And before we start the game, I have made one little mistake right here in the, uh, where is it called, the in-game manager. So where we lerp in between two values, you want to lerp from the old value towards the new value. So go old value and then new value, so the new filament right here. And now we can go back to Unity and then just start the game and we should be good to go. As we can see now if I go up here I get hit and the health slowly drains me down and now I get hit again and again. And now we are actually at zero health and the player died right there. Awesome. Let's now set up the death screen and also the pause screen. So go to your canvas, right click on the canvas and go to your eye and create a new panel. And uh, let's call this the pause screen. Now what do we want in the pause screen? Let's say we want some buttons so we can continue. So go to your eye and let's make a button right here. We name this button to let's say the continue button. And for the sprite, select the button right here. Where, where is it that we always use? And the button right here. And again, the um, transition is going to be the sprite swap. And for the pressed, uh, we want to select this pressed one. And let's also resize it to 250 by 60. And let's go to direct transform and anchor it at the top. Uh, shift click and like that. And now expand it. And for the text, just type in continue. And also select a different font, the Roboto Bolt. And for the center, center, that's good. And then the color is going to be some kind of white. And let's also add a shadow right away to a negative four. And also let's size it up quite a bit like this. And we probably actually need to drag it upwards a little bit. So just to go something like negative three up here. Okay, that's good. And now we have a button. Now we have to duplicate the button right here one, two, two times. And let's rename this one to the uh, menu button. 
and the last one to the quit button go to the scene view click on the continue button and let's drag it up a little bit let's say something like this so the position right here is going to be let's say negative 250 so let's make the menu button negative 350 and then the quit button negative 450 so they are evenly spaced out click on the menu button go to the text and just type in menu and then the quit button go to the text and type in quit awesome now we have a pause menu and this is just going to toggle on and off like this and let's also change the exit menu so we can actually start the pause menu so go to the exit level button go to the scene view exit level button rename this to the pause button we are not going to need the text and for the sprites select the pause sprite right here and again for the pressed sprite also select the post uh, pressed right here and let's resize it to something like let's say 90 by 60 that's that looks good let's go to the game view look at that awesome now let's duplicate this pause button and open our pause screen right here and then drag and drop the pause button under the pause screen like this rename this to continue button 2 for the continue button 2 we want to go to the source image and select the play right here and for the pressed image select the play pressed so now if i go to the game view and undo the pause screen we have this button right here the pause button but if i toggle on the pause screen the this button is right over the other one and covers it perfectly and if i click on it this button has priority because we have this pause scene down here in the hierarchy and while we are at it let's toggle off the pause screen and duplicate the whole pause screen right here and call this the death screen toggle the death screen on and instead of the continue button let's rename this to the restart button and change the text to restart and delete the continue button right here just delete that and also go to the death screen and the background let's change it to something red ish right there that looks decent and also go to the death screen go to ui and add a text and just type in you died change the font again to roto bottle bold and the color is going to be some white ish color and the shadow is going to be the same let's say four and negative four again and let's go to the scene view and just uh, click on direct transform focus it upwards and for the width let's make it something ridiculous like 600 by 250 center it here and center it here and like, size up the font select the three buttons right here and drag them all down quite a bit so that our text is at the top right here now go to the game view and this looks decent and we still have to kind of set up the buttons or they won't really work so let's toggle the death screen off and go to the in-game manager first off you're going to need references to the pause screen and death screen so make a public game object and let's call this the pause menu and let's also make a public game object and call this the the death menu let's now go to the bottom so that our buttons are at the bottoms let's rename the on exit button click to on menu button clicked let's also make a public void a let's call this the on quit button clicked and in here we just want to make a debug.log statement and quit application this is not going to work in Unity, obviously. And here we just want to call the application.quit, just simply like that. And probably want to save the game before we do that, once we implement the save and load script. And we also want to a public void on pause button clicked. And in here, when we click the pause button, we have to pause the game, so time dot time scale. And we want to set it equal to zero. And then also the pause menu dot set active and we want to set the active to true and with the time the time scale we have to be quite careful because if you click the menu button we also have to reset the time scale to one and you can do lots of fun stuff with the time scale like some slow motion and whatnot and we might even implement some of that but let's continue on with the buttons and now we also need a public void and let's call this the on continue button clicked and again if we hit the continue button the time dot time scale has to be reset dot to one float and then the pause menu uh, has to be set to inactive again like so next up we have the restart button so public void on restart button clicked and in the restart we want to save the game again and then we want the time.timescale to reset the whole timescale 
and we also want to reload this current scene so scene manager dot load scene and we want to get the current scene so scene manager dot get active scene and then we want to get the name because this takes in a string and the last function we need is a public void uh, open dev menu and in here just again the time dot time scale and because we op we are opening a menu just set that to 0 f and the dev menu dot set active is going to be true and where do we want to call this function so let's copy the name go up here and where we have the change health bar if the current health is equal to zero we want to invoke this function okay so go, type in invoke and what the invoke function does it calls a function after some time so it's, as you can see we have to put in the screw string name like this the open death menu and the time is going to be the health bar change time so if the player hits zero health we want to play an animation and whatsoever and we want the health bar slider to still go down to zero and not stop at like 25 percent right now right because we have four health so just call this function and just if it's equal to zero right here so let's set up the buttons let's start with the pause button and in here just go drag and drop the in-game manager in here and go to the in-game manager and pause button clicked on pause button clicked now for the pause screen we have the continue button menu button and quit button so again click the plus sign right there in game manager drag that bad boy in here and in game manager and then go to continue button click right here and the menu button just do the same plus sign in game manager and the in game manager and the menu button clicked on menu button clicked and quit button the same again like so in game manager in here and on quit button clicked and then the continue button again just drag and drop the in-game manager in here just to be sure reset that in-game manager and then the on continue button clicked what is continue button two and restart button again plus sign in-game manager on restart button clicked and the menu button the same as before in-game manager drag it in here on menu button clicked and the quit button is going to be the same as before so open this drag and drop the in-game manager in here and then in-game manager and on quit button click let's now go to the in-game manager and just set up the pause menu which is the pause screen right here and the dev menu is the dev screen now if i start the game if i hit pause now we open up the pause menu and the continue button covers the pause button which is quite cool so we can just click on this and as you can see all the asteroids stop right here and i can hit continue and if I get hit once, twice, three times, and let's say four times, the health goes down and then it writes you die. And we have the options right here. And if I restart the level, and then we restart the level and can do the same thing. And if I pause the game, hit the menu button, I go back to the menu, the time resets. And now I can move up here and go to the level one again and start the same level. Let's do one last thing. Go to the joystick and for the image, let's select a different image right here. So go to the joystick. Uh, fixed joystick and the handle is uh, switch image that's the center image so let's select a new center image let's say like this joystick and for the fixed joystick image just select um, some kind of outline so go for the joystick right here and this does not look good at all so just go to the handler again and select a different icon and i quite like this i must say so just go down here and maybe just the alpha just do a little fade in like this 170 and do the same fade right here also so 170 and this looks decent to me so now if you like this video go and like the video subscribe to this channel and see you in the next one bye